Okay, we're here with another spray sealing video. I have the Krylon UV resistant clear. That's focusing right there. It's a clear um, acrylic spray. And this one's the Krylon here, so it should be um, archival and uh, non-yellowing. Especially anything for the uh, art um, market. You can use other types of things. Some people have used things like hairspray and whatnot. But let's get the spray down here and let's seal off these scenes. Um, you know, you have to t uh, consider um, whether or not you're done applying things like water-based inks to something like this. Uh, before spray sealing, because it will no longer ex be able to accept um, those types of water-based um, uh, media like that, but um, I want to increase the, um, the saturation and um, the value of this grayscale ink application, even though it is very minimal in terms of, um, you know, uh, the range on there. It has a range of values, but it doesn't have a range of hue or anything like that and intensity and uh, um, temperature or, or the like, but uh, I don't know. Let's see what it does here. Hopefully it looks more akin to a freshly stamped scene when the ink was still wet and uh, nice and deep and saturated, and that'll go for all of them. Okay, so standard um, spray painting uh, techniques apply in terms of the distance that you hold the can. I happen to have a, I don't know, a comfort grip or whatever, spray seal, uh, spray painting grip, you know, that's, I don't know, they're called all kinds of different things, but about 12 inches or so, and you want to use just a general sweeping motion when you go across. You usually start off and then work on to the scene like that, okay? Let's go... Oh, I don't know, I'll do like half of the, half of the piece right here. And I never know. It, the camera usually picks it up pretty decently, but sometimes it's hard to tell. So hopefully you can tell kind of a, a little bit of a change that's taking place as I do this. It stopped about right here, so it's subtle, but I can tell that black there is darker than this one over here. It's not only just darker, but it's it's more transparent, and uh, you know I can see the the layers of uh, imagery underneath there. But it stopped right here, so can you tell that that? gray is a little bit darker than this over here. Okay, let's continue on with that. Let me try to zoom in so we can kind of watch that uh, transformation a little bit more. I'll hit this area right here and I'll hit the sky as well. Maybe we can see the difference between here and here. Those areas are about the same in value right now, but... So from right here to here. Now let's go to this part. I would say, it, if I was to take a guess on this piece right here, I'd say that it probably increases in value about 5% maybe. Maybe not that much, but pretty close. Okay. All right. Now, this is a quick drying spray, but it'll, it'll be a little bit sticky to the ditch. I've tried to make a wind barrier around me. It's not a great idea to spray this um, while the... Uh, well, it's so windy, but it, I just have no choice. It's, it's kind of windy all day. It's real noisy out here, too, right now. I apologize about that. But I needed to get these sealed. Um, okay, but something like this, you know, it, it'll be about... Um, I don't know. It'll probably take about five minutes for it to be, you know, pretty dry to the, uh, the touch. Okay, now these ones are different. These ones are... Let me see. This one was... Uh, a matte paper with um, both alcohol and dye-based dye inks applied. This one was a real experiment. And when you get into alcohol inks, I, I don't know about the, um, the composition of it and how um, those will um, react to the spray sealant. The spray sealant is not going to make the water-based um, media go back into solution, but I think it's possible that the, uh, the acrylic from this can or the binder specifically of this acrylic spray could put the uh, alcohol inks back into solution. Sometimes, you know, you can use that as like almost like a technique there, but let's see what happens here. I'll try to go like half and half on these ones and see if we can tell the distance. This one again is the glossy and this one's the matte uh, paper done with um, similar types of uh, techniques. On one I did the uh, 
dibase ink with the alcohol ink over the top, and one I put the alcohol ink down with the dibase ink over the top of that one. So, dye then alcohol, and then alcohol then dye. Okay, yeah, right there. I'll do the left hand sides of both of these. Yeah, see how much richer and deeper that uh, blue got right there? This one, the range isn't so extreme, you know, in terms of light and dark, so it's not as easy to see. But I can tell here, the, the, the saturation and um, richness is a little bit different. See, from the left-hand side to the uh, uh, right. Okay, let's get them all on both sides. And I mean, this one right here is especially so. You can, let me zoom out here. See, it makes a big difference, doesn't it? Now, this is a matte paper, and, you know, maybe a matte spray would be good. I mean, this one makes it glossy, but you can put a matte spray on there, so you'll get the saturation without the, uh, the glossiness if you use a matte um, acrylic spray. But look at the difference in terms of intensity, okay? So this is always the great equalizer, I always say. If your inks are kind of drying with a dull sheen, which a lot of them do, a lot of brands do, I'd say most, um, you can bring out that intensity and value and saturation just by the use of some spray over the top of them. If you haven't sprayed spray paints and things like that before, always use the, uh, you know, the, uh, the, uh, Heed the warnings of the can. Spray outside in a well-ventilated area. Don't do this inside the house. Okay, um, let's see here. Look at this one right here. Really long. The shadows can really use um, this spray right here. I didn't go too dark up in the clouds right there, but the shadows, I think, will become much richer with the use of uh, some spray here. So, let's see. Let me try to zoom in as best I can. Okay, see how these um, shadows right here are, are pretty close in terms of uh, their uh, value right now and intensity. Let me hit this one over here. Can you see the difference between there and there? They tend to hit things in bursts. Look at that, those clouds and the, the saturation of that blue really coming out. Yeah. Now, it'll remain that way, too. I mean, the UV spray doesn't make something light fast, and I think if I put something like this on display, it would fade out, you know, if exposed to sunlight for too long. But, you know, you can always uh, take a photo of it and print it out or something like that if you want to put something on display. Um, but this will, you know, seal things off, and it'll retain the, uh, the intensity of it if, you know, stored or whatever, or just not on display and you know in in high sunlight or something like that so it'll retain this level of um intensity and saturation okay um let's take a look at this here and i'll go with three more here's a Here's a stamp work piece right here that I did recently on video number 400 with my son. I'm not even sure which one he did and which one I did. Okay, so, oops. Okay, let's go left and right. So that right there between right here and right here. Let's go over the whole thing. Look at that intensity and that super brightness. And you're not adding something to the scenes that wasn't already there. You're just kind of reclaiming what was lost in the drying process. It just looks kind of duller, but, you know, you can always just bring it back with the use of the spray. It's like staining wood or something like that, you know, it just... Look at these little boards right here. Look at all... Um, kind of shiny and it looks like a glazed tile to me. Sorry about the focus here, but anyways, you can kind of get the gist of the uh, the finish on these uh, stamp board pieces. Really fun to spray. Okay, now these ones I've saved for last. These are my recent uh, lessons here on that uh, kind of 
space um, foliage theme. Okay, let's hit these ones up. These ones have a lot of ink, so they stand to uh, benefit the most from something like this. Okay. Ah, the wind here is really kicking up. Look at that intensity of that yellow coming back again right there. Look how dull it looks down here. I like to do the whole thing on this one. I'm really hitting the perimeter of it. But look at that. It's really quite a quite a change, isn't it? From before and after spraying. So that's the what I was going for when I was stamping it out, applying all those colors, okay? This purple one, I mean, this purple one looks okay, and it looks okay if you like it in matte, but um, I was going for something deeper. That's why I used the uh, glossy cardstock on this one. See that right here? Before, uh, before and after. Quite a transformation. Sometimes I can watch the um, inks drying and it getting that kind of frosty, dull uh, appearance as I'm stamping it out, too. It's just the combination of different brands of inks. The Marvies tend to retain the intensity without having to go into sprays, but just about every other brand of ink uh, tends to just, it dries with a dull luster, okay? It doesn't fade, it just dries that way with a dull sheen like it has this that kind of frost on the top of it. Alright, now some of you might be familiar with this one. Um, that was just done recently, but it looks really quite flat and dull, doesn't it? It's because it doesn't look like it did when I first stamped it out, so... Let's go with the top. I'll go top. Ah, this wind over here is kicking my scenes around a little bit me nuts. It's better to do this like in the early morning usually because I don't want to spray this and then it flips over and it lands on this you know front and then it sticks to whatever it just you know landed on. Okay let's give it a try. Watch this corner right there. I'll do look at that see that top corner right there. Look at that from here to there. It's just no comparison right? Look at that. Okay, top, bottom. So much better, huh? <laughs> it's almost like watching, uh, I don't know, it's, it's fun watching the transformation. It's like watching like embossing powder or something like that, you know, kind of go into that liquid form and raise, you know, this kind of magic taking place. It's I don't know, it's, it's fun, I don't know, in this case I guess it's just kind of being reacquainted with um, kind of the original uh, intention in this case. I don't know, sometimes, I don't know, sometimes it looks even better, I think. Like, I don't even remember it looking this, you know, bright and intense and rich uh, when I stamped it out, maybe because some of it was drying uh, as I was doing it, so let's see right here. Look at that saturation like that. That's what we want right there. Okay, now, I haven't posted this video yet, but I'll do that today, but this is just a quick card scene of uh, the same type of process. I didn't do go quite so dark around the perimeter. I, I should have, but I, I know I didn't. Let's just spray this one and see what that can do on something that has kind of less of a range, you know, so maybe it won't benefit from this quite as much, but... See if you can see kind of the difference between even up here and down here. It's not as extreme, but you can you see where it's kind of darker and just richer in general. Okay. So left I sprayed, I mean uh, right I sprayed and left I didn't. So let's do that again here. And final spraying like that. Looks pretty good. All right.
I do these periodically when I uh, group my uh, scenes together. When I have a big pile of them, I tend to group them and uh, get them all sprayed at the same time. So, uh, a very beneficial, um, if not uh, required, process within the uh, <clears throat> kind of the overall scheme of things. So, really brings things out. Anyways, I hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, drop us a note in the comment section.